everyone, today I'll show you a more professional approach to filming your hyperlapses with DJI Mavic 2. I'll cover everything from the camera settings to shooting your hyperlapse, all the way to editing in LR timelapse and Adobe Lightroom, to finalizing your sequence in Adobe After Effects. Now don't worry, when I come to post-processing, I'll cover everything step by step, so even the beginners can follow. Before lifting your Mavic 2 in the air, think about what kind of shot you want. Think about a nice reveal shot or a nice camera tilt. You have a drone with unlimited possibilities, so go crazy. Once you decide on what you want to shoot, choose your settings. Since we want to edit the frames later, we need to save the original files. We'll go in the settings and tap on Save Original. And then under Hyperlapse, we'll tap on Save Original Hyperlapse and save it in a RAW file. This will save the original files this 1-inch beast of a sensor can capture and we'll be able to edit our hyperlapse to its full potential. Another setting you'd want to change is your shutter speed. You'll get a better looking hyperlapse with a lower shutter speed. You can achieve this easily if you're shooting at a sunrise or a sunset, but during the day you'll have to close down the aperture all the way and use an ND filter. Official ND filters from DJI or third-party sites like Polar Pro are not yet available, so I won't be using them in this video. When you lower your shutter speed, your cars, bodies of water and similar objects won't look as jittery and your hyperlapse will look better overall. Now since I'm shooting in a broad daylight and I don't have ND filters, I won't be able to lower my shutter speed for this example. Now one thing to note here is that the drone can be as steady as a tripod, so choose your shutter speed with caution. Now we're ready to start shooting the hyperlapse. I like waypoint hyperlapse the best, but feel free to use any mode you like. I'll set my waypoint and interval settings and start shooting. Alright, Mavic did its part of the job, so let's land it and edit our sequence. Once you import your files to your PC, open up LR Timelapse. In the left drop-down menu, find the folder with your hyperlapse sequence. As soon as you click on it, LR Timelapse will import it and start initializing. In the visual workflow, click on Keyframes Wizard. LR Timelapse will automatically place a couple of keyframes, but you can also do this manually by clicking on the diamond button. You can also preview your sequence in the top left corner. After you have set your keyframes, click on the Save button. This will save the keyframe information in the metadata. Then open up Lightroom. Make sure you're in Library View and then go back to LR Timelapse. Click on the Next button and drag and drop it in Lightroom. This will automatically open the Import dialog. Make sure that the import operation is set to Add so that Lightroom doesn't create unnecessary copies of your sequence. If you want to, you can build the previews. For hyperlapses, I always set mine on minimal and I don't create smart previews. Make sure all your photos are selected and click on import. You'll notice that your keyframe photos are rated 4 stars. We will filter only the keyframes in the bottom right drop-down menu. And now we're gonna edit them. Open up your first photo and go into the develop module. I'll first increase the exposure a bit and then correct my white balance. Then I will add some contrast. I lower the highlights a bit, add a bit of clarity and some vibrance. Then I'll scroll down to the details and add a bit of noise reduction. And finally I'll pull my image a bit towards still an orange look. Then I'll go in the gradient filters and click on the predefined one. Make sure you don't delete these or add any new gradient filters as that might glitch out LR timelapse. I'll add just a bit of dehaze to my sky and I'm done. Then I'll go back to Library View and select my other keyframe photo. I'll go up to Scripts and select LR Timelapse Sync Keyframes. This script will automatically be added to Lightroom once you install LR Timelapse. I'm satisfied with this result, so I'll select my two keyframes and then go up to Metadata and save Metadata to Files. Make sure you're in Library View when you're doing this. Then I'll go back to LR Timelapse and click on Reload. This will bring me all the changes I've made in Lightroom. Once you do that, click on Auto Transition. This will edit all your photos between the keyframes and make nice transitions between slider values. Then click on Visual Previews. This will create a quick render in LR Timelapse with all your changes so you can preview your sequence. Here's another bug in LR Timelapse when working with the Mavic 2 files. As you might have noticed, my white balance looks a bit off than what I've set it to. But don't worry, we will correct this in Lightroom later. Once the visual previews are done, you can preview your sequence. Hey. 
there might be some flicker in your shot, so click on visual the flicker and let LR time lapse do its job. You can leave the flicker settings as default. Once the flickering is done, go back to Lightroom and click on full sequence. Select all your photos and go to metadata, read metadata from files. As you can see, the white balance is much colder than before. We will correct this by going into develop module and setting our white balance. Once we set it for the first photo, just make sure you selected all of them and click on sync metadata and sync the white balance. Now we're done with editing our frames, so we are ready to export them. Go back to library view, right click on your images and select go to folder in library. Then make sure all your images are selected and click on export. In the export tool drop down, we will select export timelapse LR timelapse. We will select our destination and the file format. In the free version of LR timelapse, you can export up to 400 frames in JPEG format, so I'll use that. Since we'll be further editing the sequence in After Effects, click on skip LR timelapse rendering. And that's it, you can click on export. Once the export is done, go into After Effects and import your sequence. Then create a new composition from your sequence. Go in the tracker panel and select Warp Stabilizer. As soon as you click it, it will automatically start analyzing your footage. You can leave your settings as default. Once it's finished analyzing, it will automatically stabilize it. Then we're gonna right click on our layer, select Precompose and move all the attributes. Then go in the composition settings and select the resolution you like. I'll choose Full HD 25 frames per second. Then I'll scale down my layer and I'm ready to render. I'll choose QuickTime H264. You can lower the quality and limit the data rate if you'd like. I'll choose my destination and click on render. And that's it! You'll now have a much better looking hyperlapse than what the Mavic 2 does internally. Thanks for watching and goodbye!